Uh, this morning we're going to be in, uh, I want everybody to turn in their Bibles to Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse 22 through 33, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, actually uh, that's that's 14, I'm sorry, Matthew 14, Matthew 14, verse 22 through 33. Matthew 14. <clears throat> I'm going to start reading there this morning. Uh, this is uh, came to me and I just uh, thought that it was uh, one of the things I needed to uh, preach on the Lord put it on, on my heart to preach on it this morning, and so, uh, like I said, I lost my notes, but we're going to let the Lord open up my heart, and uh, we're going to let Him speak through me, and we're going to do this. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 33, starting right there on 22, it says, Immediately Jesus made His disciples get into the boat and go before Him to the other side, while He sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. <clears throat> so he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me! And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, with humble spirits, open minds, Lord, open hearts, so that we might hear your word, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you would just use me as a vessel to get the word out there uh, to the congregation and to those that are watching uh, on the internet and stuff, Lord, we ask that you would just uh, open up their hearts and their minds and their ears and their eyes to the situations and tribulation trials that are uh, going on around them, Lord, knowing that you are overall, Lord, that you are God Almighty. So, Lord, we ask that you would just uh, be with those that are on a prayer list, Lord, uh, be with those that can't be here today, be with all the, the people that are on the uh, uh, that are going through the trials and tribulations of everyday situations uh, when we know that you know who they are. And Lord, I ask that you would just uh, be with us as we uh, hear your word today, Lord, and all this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> we notice here that, uh, you know, uh, this is the story, and I know you've uh, all heard it before, the story of uh, Jesus walking on the water. Well, I'm not as old as some of the elders we have here in the church, but I know for a fact that Ralph is probably the oldest one in here. But back when I was growing up, we walked everywhere we went. Like, we rode bicycles or we rode a skateboard or we walked, you know. Uh, you know, when we didn't uh, have transportation to go where we needed to go, as kids, we walked down to... Uh, one of our friend's house and we all played football, we all gathered there but uh, we walked everywhere <coughs> we went and we see here that Jesus did the same. Jesus came from heaven 
you know, born uh, of a virgin. And then uh, when he started his ministry, he walked everywhere he went. Same way with his disciples. They walked everywhere that they went. We notice here that uh, this is shortly after uh, Jesus says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And what they're talking about here is Jesus had just fed about 5,000 men along with their wives and children. So there was more like 20,000. It wasn't just 5,000. It was probably more like 20,000. And the multitude had uh, had gathered around and you know and seen what Jesus had done with the little boy's picnic basket that only had the two fish and the five loaves. And if you've noticed that the miracle that Jesus did that day, they had 12 baskets left over. It was almost like he just continued to pull bread and hand out fish, right? So these people uh, were more than likely anxious to see what else was fixing to happen. But Jesus knew that there was a time for everything and that he wanted to go and uh, be with the Father on the mountain so that he could pray. And uh, so he told the disciples, he commanded them, get into the boat and leave. And they did. And so Jesus sends the multitude away uh, so that he can go up and be in a silent place with the Father so that he can pray to him and give thanks to him and to rest. Okay. Uh, and we see that uh, here it says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them. <clears throat> and the reason why he went to them is because he could tell that they were in some kind of trouble. You know, during the time that he was up there on the mountain, you know, they had went out on the Sea of Galilee, and as we all know, that the sea is basically a big lake. But that Sea of Galilee is, is known for having these storms that just pop up. Uh, out of nowhere. Sound familiar to you guys here in East Texas? Storms that just come up and then we go, oh, we're going to get some rain. And then it kind of just floats around you <laughs> and goes somewhere else. Well, these here, <coughs> they were different. You know, and of course, all the disciples, you know, they knew <coughs> what these storms were going to be like because they were fishermen. You know, they lived out on the sea. They knew what would happen, how the waves would get big and the wind would get strong. And so they were fearful of their lives about what might happen. <coughs> Excuse me. But we see that it says, uh, and then he had sent the multitudes away. He went out uh, up to the mountain uh, by himself to pray. And now when evening uh, came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. <laughs> so all this time, while the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, was on the mountain praying, the disciples were out there rolling across the lake, right? And it had taken them some time to get to the middle, <clears throat> but as you guys know, I don't know how many of us out here that have been in a canoe or a rowboat or something like that. When you're out on the water and the wind picks up, you see a storm kind of coming in or whatever, and the waves get choppy, it's kind of hard. You, you start losing whatever strength that you had after about 30 minutes of rowing, you're tired of rowing. Okay? So these guys were tired and weary. They'd been fighting all through the day to get across the Sea of Galilee, and they were just about at the middle whenever. Uh, this storm comes up, and uh, we see that uh, that Jesus never takes his eyes off of them. You know, he knows what is going to happen. Okay, so it's in the now in the fourth watch. It says now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Now this is like the fourth 
watch is more like between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning. So you can imagine, it was daylight when they left, and it's already dark. And I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, whenever you get that night vision, you can only see so far, okay? Uh, when you go out, after you come in from the light, and you go out into the darkness, your eyes take a while before they can adjust to the dark. So you get that night vision, but still, your, your vision is limited, right? So... Uh, now they see uh, that Jesus sees that they're in trouble, and so he comes to them doing what? <clears throat> Walking on water. Just, I mean, he'd walked everywhere else, right? You know? He'd walked yeah. everywhere else. He wasn't in very much of a hurry because he knew he was going to be there when he got there. And he knew what was going to happen. And he was in control of the whole situation anyway, so he was walking out across the water to them. It says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. Have you ever had somebody ask you, Do you believe in ghosts? Well, evidently the disciples believed in ghosts or believed that there was somewhat something that was of a, a darker, darker principle because that's what they thought they saw. They thought they saw a ghost and they had called out and said, hey, it's a ghost. They were feared. They were in trouble. They, they were in a storm in the middle of battling this wind and, and the ocean, fearing for their life. Sound familiar about some of the stuff that we go through on our daily basis, the trials and tribulations, the storms that arise. It may not be out in the boat in the middle of a, a lake fighting the wind and the water and the waves and stuff like that, but it can be as simple as driving to work on the interstate and somebody cutting you off, making you mad because your coffee's not got you awake yet, or if uh, you're in school, and some kid said something to you out of the ordinary, or knocks your books out of your hand, or calls you a name, those storms that come up can be a financial situation, you know, <clears throat> you got X amount of bills, but you don't have X amount of money. And that storm is just making you stressed out. Talking bad to your wife. You know, she doesn't want to hear it. You know, she's had just as long a day as you had. But that storm has got you down. And you're fearing that you're not going to be able to float. That you're going to fall. That you're going to drown. The disciples here, they knew the consequences of being out there on the water. They knew that they couldn't walk on water only by faith. It says, but immediately Jesus spoke, and, well, they cried out, uh, and they cried out for fear. Notice the fear. They said they cried out for fear. But God tells us all throughout the Bible, do not be afraid. When the angel came to Mary and told Mary that she was going to be uh, impregnated by the Holy Spirit and she was going to have Jesus Christ, he tells her what? He assures her, do not be afraid. Yeah. Okay. But he tells them, don't be afraid. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. During that storm that you're going through, you can be of good cheer knowing that God has got it all under control. He's got it all under control. It says, he says, be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. It's like Brother Rick mentioned this morning. He said, if the Lord is for us, who can be against us? Right? Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says it is impossible to please God without faith because the one who draws near to God must believe that he exits and that he rewards people 
who tried to find him. Amen. Notice that the Bible tells us that Jesus, Jesus immediately, immediately took care of business. He can do that in your life too. He can immediately make those trials and tribulations go away. But sometimes there's a lesson to learn. And He allows you to go through it. You may stumble through it, but you'll get through it. The Bible tells us this too shall pass, right? It says, be of good cheer. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, you've got to understand, Peter's a different type of person than the rest of the disciples. Okay? But I'm going to tell you right now, Brother Rick, Brother John, Ralph, me, and Brother Roger were in a, in a boat, and we were out on Lake Tyler, and it got pretty stormy, and, uh, and it was dark, and we saw somebody coming across the water, and Brother Rick's brought up, uh, somebody should get out of the boat and go see what he wants. I believe that they'd have been drawing straws or something because <laughs> it would have been hard. But you notice Peter speaks right away and he says, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. I think Peter was looking for reassurance there. Peter had the faith. But he was looking for reassurance that it was Christ indeed. Because he knew all things were possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He knew that God could walk on water. So Peter's main focus was what? Coming to him. Coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't the fact that he was going to get out of the boat and walk across the water to Jesus. It was the actual coming to the Lord. We have to know that God is over everything and that we can go to the Lord just like Peter got out of the boat. He wasn't worried about the water. He was focused on Christ at first, right? He was focused on Christ. And you got to know that that little bit of faith that led Peter to jump out of that boat and to start walking across the water is a little bit of in order to succeed and to go further. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Peter knew where his strength came from. Amen. He knew where his strength came from. And guess what? Jesus knew Peter believed in him because he said what? Come. Well, you know what? That's the same answer that Christ gives us. He says, come. I will be there for you. I will be your support. Come. He said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Sound familiar? Whenever I start to fail at some things, I'm always crying out, Lord, I need your help today. Save me. I need a sign. Peter took his focus off Christ and noticed what was going on around him. And again, those natural instincts of being a fisherman and knowing what storms could do to a ship and what storms could do to the human body, he knew in the back of his mind that naturally he could drown. But Jesus Christ had told him, come. And with that little bit of faith that he had, he stepped out of the boat. But again, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ does what? He comes to Peter's aid. He immediately, he doesn't let Peter think about what's going to happen to him. You know, he doesn't let him go under the water. It says, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? 
And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. A lot of times whenever we look back on a month of trials and tribulations, we go, how in the world did I, did we ever make it through this month? I don't understand it. Again, you should have drowned. You should have drowned. But the Lord Jesus Christ tells us, Oh, you a little faith. You have to come to Him, just like Peter did. You have to have focus on the fact that you can do all things through Him. You have to know for a fact that God is over all, that He can make it happen. Not you, but through Him. And if you're saved by the blood of Christ, if you know that Jesus died on the cross for you, then the Bible tells us that He is in you. You're a new creation. You're not that old soul. You're a new creation. And with that little bit of faith, if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ for help, He's not going to deny you. Now, it might not be the help that you think you need, but eventually, after everything has gone and passed over, you'll look back and you'll say, how did I not drown? He says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. <clears throat> this is the perfect statement here, ladies and gentlemen, of the power of our Almighty God that He can make. He has power over everything. The wind Amen. ceased. Stop. Period. There was a storm and He just gone. It can be that way in your life too. If you let Him lead you, let Him guide you. Sure. The Bible tells us there's two paths, right? Two paths. A broad path which leads to destruction and a narrow path which people find it. Which path are you going down? John chapter 20, verse 29 says, Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Peter believed that if he stepped out of the boat, he would come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He believed that he would not, he would defy all the natural things that he knew as a fisherman, he would deny that because God was over all in his life. He knew that he would not sink because he had his focus on Jesus. But when his surrounding factors came into play and he noticed the wind and the waves and he started stinking thinking about what would happen and not allowing God to take control, then he started to sing and he cried out. We know what God can do. We've seen Him in our lives act and do. Yeah. It says He immediately stretched out His hand and caught Him. He does that to us every day. We have to do some self-reflecting sometimes. We have to know, is our faith grounded in Scripture? Is it grounded in Scripture? If not, you're going to wind up drowning. It says in uh, then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. 
They knew. They knew right away who it was. At first they thought it was a ghost. Because they couldn't see that far. And they knew. They knew that there were dark, demonic principalities that they fought against every day. They knew that there was a Satan. That there was an adversary that would pull them down, that would pull them under, that would sink them. But they gave praise and worship to the Lord Jesus Christ there. And notice in the beginning of this, uh, in these verses where I read to you that even Jesus himself went upon the mountain to be by himself to praise God for the opportunity, for his mercy and for his grace. Are we doing that today? In our daily lives, are we thanking the Lord Jesus Christ for that next breath? For that next 10 minutes? Are we stepping through that door of opportunity whenever the opportunity arises to tell people about Christ and about what He's done for you and I? This is something that everybody battles all the time. Those that are given gifts, are they using their gifts to their full potential? Are they, well, whenever I really do think I'm needed, I'll, I'll finally go and pursue this. No. If God's put it on your heart to do something, you should immediately, just like Jesus does here, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and saying, be of good cheer. But immediately, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. If Jesus can immediately do it for Peter, then why can't we immediately do it for him? Even if we have that little bit of faith. To step outside of our comfort zone is such a small price to pay for the mercy and grace and the salvation that we receive from doing it. As you can see, the story of Jesus walking out on the water has more meaning to it than just the actual miracle that happened. Jesus is saying here, if you come to me, if you have a little bit of faith, it's the journey. It's the journey that between being a non-believer and then becoming a believer. Even if you have that little bit of faith, that faith can be built upon. And the way you do that is you come to church and you get in this book and you read it. And if you don't understand it, you ask that's right. You ask God to open up your heart. The Ethiopian. We heard about that not too long ago, right? Yeah. He asked, he said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I? If there's no one here to explain it to me. We are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. We are to take this word out to the edges so that they might know him, so that they might be of good cheer and know that if they're drowning, they can be saved. That God will immediately reach out if, if they ask the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. He will immediately save them. Again, Right here, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I want to go back to it. It says, It is impossible to please God without faith. Because the one who draws near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards people who try to find Him. If you're lost in this dying world, because right now, People, all, all the stuff that's on the internet, all the 
the stuff that's on the news, all the stuff that is in the politics, all the stuff that's going on in the religions out there. And notice I said religions. It's all distorted. It's all watered down. Most of it. I'm not going to say all. It's a big word. Three letters. They promise you one thing and give you another. But Christ will never change. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 is the same yesterday, today, and always. He will Amen. never change. He's going to be there for you just like He was for Peter. He's going to reach out His hand and immediately, immediately, He's going to say, be of good cheer because I have overcome. He has overcome the world. Death. Let Him be your Lord and Savior. Let Him be your guide. If not today, tomorrow, as soon as possible. I'm going to leave you with this final word and that uh, know that uh, the disciples were learning as they went to. Jesus was teaching them every day. Just like He is with us. As pastors, teachers, Sunday school teachers, don't know everything. We're learning just like you. Amen. God is there for us. He wants you to come to Him. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. If you make your uh, problems known to the Lord Jesus Christ, He will. He will get to them. He hears you. He knows what you're going through. you got to understand that Jesus went through the same things that we go through. Trials and tribulations. Being promised by the devil that Everything's going to be hunky-dory. I know this in the Bible where Jesus was tempted three times. The devil took him upon the highest mountain and did what? said, I'll give you all of this if you worship me. And that's what he's going to say to us. I'll give you all of this. I will make sure you get this, this, and this if you just do this. Jesus God puts that invitation out there for you with no circumstances, no, uh, no backstory behind it. He says, I want to be your Lord and Savior. I want to be the mediator. I want to bridge that gap between God and you. Because we all know when Adam and Eve sinned, we had they had, per they had perfect. They had communion. They were able to walk and talk with the Lord Jesus Christ every day. See Him. But when they sinned, when, Jesus, when God told them that, hey, Adam, you know, if you eat of this fruit of the tree of life, he will surely die. Then that separated them. So we're, we're separated from the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you reach out to Jesus today, if you reach out for Him, call out to Him, He will immediately get to it. He, he'll get to it. Amen. That being said, that's all I have. Uh, Brother Ralph, you want to come up and we'll have a hymn of invitation. I'm going to be down here. Uh, Brother Rick's here as well. Uh, we have the deacons. Uh, if you guys uh, want to pray, uh, just come and and uh, myself and uh, we'll pray with you. Uh, those of you that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, remember, there's no time like the present. No time like the present. Look at that. Hymn right yeah. number 21, I am thine, O Lord. Number 21. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine. Amen. Wow.
said, Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Terry, will you dismiss us?